Hello, I am Dr. Che, and in this video, we will talk about clinical communication criteria of OET speaking. OET speaking criteria, in the first video, we have recorded linguistic criteria, and second video, we will record clinical communication criteria. So, Ms. Tatiana will tell me why it is important to know about official OET criteria? Because... Uh, to get the, B grade. Yeah. To get B grade, okay. So maybe we should a. know, we should know. Yeah, maybe a. we should know what, how the examiner is going to mark our speaking. When we get 340, 330, 320, then we keep, you know, uh, we apply for remark, then we talk with Dr. Che. Okay, Dr. Che, mm -hmm. uh, could you please tell me if I remark speaking, can I get 350? I say, yes, yes, go for remark if you have done very well. And, you know, but main thing is if we prepare well, we know how, how they are going to mark my speaking, then it is easy for us to pass the exam. Another thing is clinical communication criteria is not your English. It is full to fulfill clinical communication, medical criteria, clinical communication criteria. Even if you are native speaker, you are living in, you know, in developed countries, English countries, you are speaking English on daily basis, your English is very good. Still, if you don't fulfill clinical communication criteria, you will not get B grade. Okay, that is why it is important to, me, to know about clinical communication criteria. What is criteria number one? Relationship building. Relationship building. Relationship building. Do you remember anything how we develop relationship with our patient? This is not relationship or friendship. This is professional relationship okay between doctor yeah. and patient and nurse and patient okay do you remember mm -hmm. anything about relationship building yes for it's example introducing yourself introducing yourself yes also calling the patient uh, by name yeah asking okay. name yeah. How feeling. yeah, feelings, all of these, excellent, excellent. Number two, I will explain all of these things. Number two is understanding and incorporating patient's perspective. Patient perspective. Let us ex take an example. If I am a teacher and I start explaining all of these things without your input, without talking about you, if you are, uh, you know, understanding or not, is it good or not? No, no, no good, not good. In the same way, if you're talking with a patient, you should incorporate your patient into your conversation. You cannot keep talking and talking and talking. Oh, I have my some of my students who have done speaking with me, and I have shown you know in the previous video, uh, you know uh, we have you know almost three hundred fifty three recordings, and each recording in each folder we have two, three, four, five. Uh, role plays that I have done with my students. So the problem is here we need to incorporate the patient in conversation. Number third is providing structure. I will explain yeah. you what is uh, providing structure and give information and take inform give information you no, know, gather information and give information. So there are set rules, set criteria, set sub criteria mm -hmm. to explain these things to the patient to get B grade in OET speaking. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first one is relationship building. Okay. What are these things? First one. Can you read it, please? Initiating the interaction appropriately, greeting, introduction, and then according to the nature of, of interview. interview. If yes. it is bad news, 
so we should a little bit sad and it's but you know not very very you know welcoming and warm welcome no need of very warm welcome and current situation if it is revisit patient you should act according to the revisit patient if it is new patient you should be greeting we should do the introduction according to the situation okay for example mm -hmm. just uh, before this class i was doing one interview with uh, with one doctor and uh, there was a kid and whose father was uh, visiting again to collect ultrasound report that you have uh, ordered on the last visit in that case you have to uh, introduce like you already know the patient okay how you are yeah. uh, hello i am dr che one of the doctors in this clinic hello mr smith i am dr che one of the doctors in this clinic how your daughter is doing now something like that okay then we need to ask about their results this this so if it is a new patient how can i help you today so we need to keep you know taking the name of the patient in our conversation if i you know call you and other students by name just go to you know build relationship if i only calling you know without name it is not good to build good relation number two is be attentive and respectful attitudes we should use we should be attentive if i'm asking you know doctor you know doctor i have a headache and you know i am also having vomiting okay in the next question if you are yes guy okay mr smith could you please tell me do you have headache i have just doctor told you that i have headache why you are asking again so this is not new because people repeat things because they are written in the bullet point they follow the order so we should be attentive if i am asking about okay doctor if i am asking about treatment tell me about treatment if i am asking anything the patient is asking anything first respond to that query then go to other point okay we should be respectful we should mm -hmm. be non judgmental if patient tells anything that is not good for example if patient was not you know compliant with medication if patient if patient is you know uh, drinking alcohol heavily if patient is smoking heavily anything any of these things if patient is eating a lot of junk food we cannot you know uh, be yeah. non judgmental you know, this is not good it is pro prohibited and this is this and this is not allowed and we 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 should not do we should be non judgmental approach okay we should show sympathy empathy and we should give for example there is a case for mm -hmm. example patient is having wilms tumor that is kind of, kind of kidney tumor mm -hmm. when you break this bad news okay 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 mr che uh, according to mm -hmm. you according to ultrasound report of your daughter i am really sorry to say that according to your ultrasound report of your daughter she has kidney cancer that we call as wilms tumor have you heard about that this is a common question people use have you heard about that now my question is when you are breaking bad news to me bad news if you ask me any question have you heard about it i will say no doctor yes doctor can i show my emotion can i show my feelings here no after telling me that you have your daughter has kidney cancer you should have stopped then when you will stop i will show oh, doctor how it is possible my daughter can have cancer this she is only my one daughter and this okay we should show sympathy empathy you know according to the situation many people keep saying i am sorry to hear that i am sorry to hear that i am sorry to hear that i understand you are concerned i understand your concern mr smith i am sorry to hear that throughout their role play this is not good that is that is you know mechanical way it is the artificial way mm -hmm. we should show sympathy empathy is in, in a natural in a quite natural way not in you know mm -hmm. fake and you know artificial way 
Number two is indicators of understanding and incorporating patients' per perspectives. How many much time we have in OT speaking? Five minutes. Five minutes. If you are talking for four and a half minutes, okay, mm -hmm. and your patient is only talking for 30 seconds. 30 it's not good. Uh, no, no. Even still, you are thinking, why this patient talked for 30 seconds? Even should have taken these 30 seconds also. So is this interactive conversation or not? This is not interactive conversation because the doctor or the nurse is talking a lot, a lot. Our only patient is saying yes, no, yes, <laughs> no, yes, no. I only, don't know. Yeah, so this is not good. At least, mm -hmm. at least, you know, pay, doctor or nurse should talk about almost three minutes and patient should talk about almost for two minutes, okay? Like this, almost, mm -hmm. okay? It means we should incorporate patient in our conversation. If you are only talking and talking and talking, you you know, Miss Tatiana, it is real that when students do first and second role play with me, they speak a lot. Okay, Mr. Smith, I'm the one of the best doctors in the world. You, first of all, you need to do this, then you need to do this. If you feel any comfortable, you can contact me. This is my WhatsApp number, this is my phone number. And you know, this this pain is not due to uh, what you are thinking. This pain is due to this. And I will prescribe you Panadol, I will prescribe you Meprazole, and I will do this, and I will do this. And you will feel better, don't worry. You are in good hands, I am the best. Doctor, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not good, you know. I have a lot of, I have a lot of speaking here. Can you see my this screen? Yes. Three hundred and fifty-three items means folders. In each folder, you can see this one is empty. <laughs> so maybe I have recorded some class. You can see two two recordings here. Here three. Okay. Here you can see three recordings so mean in each folder there are two three or four role plays so 300 and 50 means i i have done a lot of role plays with doctor nurses with pharmacist a lot of people so what i want to say is i have a lot of experience in speaking giving feedback and mm -hmm. what we should do is uh, we should not talk a lot. This is the main issue of many students. They don't incorporate the patient in conversation. Okay. There are different ways to incorporate the patient in conversation. We cannot talk a lot of these things in one go. So, but here. So, pick a patient cues. Cues. Okay. There is one. There is, yes. There is one role play in nursing when mm -hmm. patient is having urinary, urinary incontinence. Yeah. This patient is shy and she will mm -hmm. not tell that she is having urinary incontinence. He will keep say, telling, okay, miss, you know, I want to see the urologist. Uh, okay, Miss Tatiana will no, say, she wants the pills. Yeah, yeah, Miss Tatiana will say, could you please tell me the reason? You know, yes. I want anti-inflammatory medication and what Miss Tatiana will say, could you tell me or should I talk to the police? <laughs> you need yeah. to convince the patient please miss miss uh, miss uh, you know smith mrs smith please i know this is very hard for you yes. to disclose yes. da, 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 blah, blah, blah. yes it is very hard for you to disclose but please let me reassure you that every information anything that you will tell us tell yeah. us here it is quite confidential we are not allowed to share with anybody else okay uh, this is at the end at the start you could, could you please tell me uh, why you want to see the urologist then uh, miss uh, miss uh, miss uh, mrs smith basically 
I could you please tell me about your symptoms because I need to talk to about your condition to the doctor like this. What you can make it up. Uh, it is very. I th I know it is very hard for you to tell about your symptoms. But could you please tell me what is, uh, what is your concern about your symptoms? Like you need to convince the patient. Patient will not be or shy. So relating explanations to elicited ideas, concern, expectations. So you need to take a, into consideration what is the idea of the patient, what he is expecting, what is his concern, all of these things. Okay. Not yeah. uh, directly ask, uh, okay, Mrs. Samit, could you please tell me what you are expecting from me? Don't directly what tell this. Like? Yes. No, don't mm -hmm. directly let like it. When you're doing conversation with your patient, then you, you, uh, you know, uh, you should take in, you should keep in mind that you need to con discuss this concern, you need to address this patient concern, you need to fulfill their expectations, all of these things. So if you get, so in clinical communication criteria, we have three marks. So if mm -hmm. you get two out of three, you, it is possible you will get B grade in all of these. If you get a one or zero, you will not get a B grade, okay? So you can mm -hmm. see if, if you miss one point, then it would be difficult for you providing structure. What do you think about providing structure? This is criteria number three in clinical communication criteria. What do you think about providing structure to the patient? You let him know what's, what you're going to do today, what you're going to discuss with the uh -huh. patient. No, no, no. No, this is not perverse. No. If you're talking about three things, three things, you need to organize, for example, okay, Mr. Smith, first of all, let me tell you that you can take Panadol and this and this and this. And another thing that that would be helpful, helpful for you is augmented. And, at the, and lastly, finally, I will... I will. I would advise you to exercise, exercise regularly at least for thirty minutes in a day, for you know, like this. Okay, yeah. So you need to sequence. You know, use sequencing. Use organize your conversation. Start from the one point. Okay, Mr. Smith. First, so you need to do this, 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 and this, and this. This is not good. You need to make a good sequence of your interview, logical sequence, okay? You need signposting in your, okay, okay, Mr. Smith, now let us talk about treatment. This is signposting, changes from, you are talking about symptoms, diagnosis, now you are talking about treatment, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Smith, talking about uh, your symptoms, could you please tell me this and no. So at the end, Mr. Smith, I would like to discuss some lifestyle modifications with you. First of all, you need to avoid junk food. You need to do this. So is this called sequencing? Sequencing. My career so far. I am my career so far. This is, you know, taking feedback from the patient, incorporating the patient. This is the second criteria that we have discussed, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, Get, getting feedback, patient is understanding or not. It is also good. Signposting changes. Uh, okay, using organization techniques. Okay, you, there are different organization techniques, so you can use. If you get two, you know, this student got in real exam, he got C. Plus. He was getting C mm -hmm. with me, and the real exam, he got C also because we had done only a few role plays. And his speaking was not good. He was a doctor, but in the real exam, he also got the same score. So, so we need to do, you know, fulfill all of these criteria. Information gathering and information giving. What we should say. The most Important. important criteria. These two criteria are the most important criteria in OET speaking. Okay. Let me take Miss Kate. Can you please read first point? 
Okay. Facilitating the patient's narr narrative with active listening techniques, minimizing interruptions. Okay. If you are telling me, uh, for example, you are, uh, uh, what I said, you, uh, you are patient, I am doctor. You are telling me, you know, doctor, yesterday I was sleeping and suddenly, then you stop, then you keep speaking. Okay, Mr. Smith, could you please tell me about your symptoms, about this and this? You are interrupting your patient. Don't interrupt your patient. Listen to your patient. Okay, other thing is, active listening is. Okay, Dr. Tatiana is the doctor, mm -hmm. I am the patient. I'm saying, you know, doctor, yesterday I was giving presentation mm -hmm. to my colleagues and I suddenly felt mm -hmm. weak on my right side. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ask, then you ask, okay, Mr. Smith, could you, could you please tell me if you, if weakness was on right side or left side? You are listening activity or not? Listen. No. Yeah, I, already, I already told you that I said on right side. You don't need to ask it. And another yeah. example is, uh, let me, okay. You, if in your bullet point is ta talk about, uh, ask about symptoms, duration, sometimes, let me give you example. In your bullet, first bullet point, ask about, about symptoms and then they can duration and then, you know, uh, frequency, okay. So open question, close yes, question. No, no. Yes, it is the thing. So first you are asking this bullet point. Okay. You will ask, okay, Mr. Smith, could you please tell me about your symptoms? Okay, I am patient. Yes, doctor, you know, I am having, you know, weakness. I yesterday I was giving presentation to my colleagues and I suddenly felt weak on my right side. And you know, doctor, it only lasted for five minutes. As you are a very intelligent student and you are excellent student, you want A grade and you are, this is just, I'm kidding, okay? Because in last video, I recorded that one thing that was just joke and people started, you know, copying that. So it is just joke. So if you need A grade, you will tell, you will tell, you know, you need to fulfill all of these uh, bullet points. So that you will ask, okay, Mr. Smith, could you please tell me how did these symptoms last is it okay to ask or not no why because he told you i already told you in the first uh, conversation that it lasted for five minutes if i i'm telling you do it on need to ask it again it means you're not listening actively you're just robot who are who will just, you know, follow the card, follow the card. Okay. You not need to be robot. You should follow logical, logically. Okay. According to the active listening and minimal interruption. Okay. So second mm -hmm. one, you will read Miss uh, Tatiana. Can you read please? Using initially open question, appropriately moving to closed questions. Let me take Miss, Miss Kate, because you are a bit old. My old student, you know about these things. Miss Kate, can you give me any example of open question? Um, could you tell me more about your pain? Mm -hmm. Your headache? Mm -hmm. Please, use please. Please. <laughs> tell me okay. a bit more about your headache or pain. Any other question? Open question, both of you. Do you know what can trigger the, your this is close. This is a closed question. Do you know? Yeah. I don't know what do is Do you have it? any idea? <laughs> uh, no. do, do you know? What can no. trigger, okay? So this is closed question, okay? Means this is closed, this is not open question, okay? Could you please? Elaborate. A bit more, elaborate more about your condition, something. Uh, okay. 
simply symptoms. yes could you please okay. explain a bit more about your symptoms okay could you please tell mm -hmm. me a bit more something like that okay any open question okay for how can i help you is also open question then after that if i if you call us you're talking with me hello mr chi i am one of the doctors in this clinic how can i help you today this open question i will tell you doctor yes doctor i am having a severe i am having pain in my left leg then mm -hmm. then you will ask how long since how long do you have this pain is it open question or closed question uh open close close you are asking only about duration if oh. you ask if you ask is this pain severe or mild or how is how severe is your pain from the scale of 1 to 10 1 is the minimum 10 is the maximum this is also talking about severity this is also closed question Mm -hmm. One question: Could you please, uh, could you please, Mr. Smith, could you please elaborate a bit more about your condition, about your pain? Uh, could you please tell me a bit more about your pain? Something like that, okay? Then okay. you will go to closed questions, and appropriately, then you move to closed question. Then how long, and you know duration and associated symptoms, this so that you can reach to diagnosis and patient. Compound question and leading question. Very important thing. Compound questions. Leading questions. Okay. Could you please give me any example of compound question, Miss Kate? Um, could you tell, could you please tell me uh how is your headache how long does it take and also um when does it disappear how long how long does it take mm -hmm. when disappear uh, yeah. how how severe it is okay okay so mean two or three things. This is one question. This is a compound question. That is good, excellent. For example, if you are, uh, do you have fever or vomiting? Okay, asking two things in one question. Okay, to actually more two or three things in one question is called compound question. We should use it or we should avoid in OET. Avoid. Why? Avoid. Why? Uh, because it's too complicated. Um, it's supposed to give the patient have chance to answer one question for One each. question. If you ask about duration and severity and, you know, associated symptoms, patient will only tell you the last thing that you have asked. Patient will forget all the other questions. That is why compound questions are not allowed in OET. We should avoid. Sometimes, you know, a little bit is, we need to be flexible. Sometimes it is okay, but when you're using it quite natural, I cannot explain all of these things here because, you know, uh, but sometimes is okay, but most of the time we should avoid compound questions. Can you give me any, uh, Miss Tatiana, any example of leading question? Yeah, it's like a close question on the scale from 0 to 10. How would you rate your pain? No. Ah, a question. Could you tell me... Um, does, does your um, pain radiate in another part of the body? Does your pain... Radiate, radiate to any Inanna. other part of your body? This is okay question. This is not a leading question. Means, is there any radiation of your pain or not? This is just okay. You can ask like this. This is common. Okay question. Mm -hmm. Any leading question? 
What do you mean leading question? Leading question. Yeah. Yes, there is Miss Kate, you do you know about leading questions? Leading questions? Uh, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Mm. And not at all. Um, this is leading question. No, no, no. This is my answer. It's not the leading question. <laughs> Uh, just, uh, just I was kidding, okay. <laughs> okay, 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 Mr. Smith. Do you have a headache? Any pain in abdomen? Number one is leading question, number two or number three, which one is leading question? No, you have options. Uh, Second three. one. Leading question is when you want to, you know, lead the patient towards something that you want, okay? For example, uh, you, you want him to tell yes, uh, no or yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Do you have a headache? He will say, yes, I have a headache. I, I don't have a headache. Do you have pain in the abdomen? It is okay question. He will say, yes, doctor, I have pain in the abdomen. I, I don't have pain in the abdomen. And mm. you don't have fever. Means he will say, yeah, doctor, I don't have fever. This is leading question. This one is leading question. And you don't have fever. What should be the normal question? Do you have, you have fever? Fever. And here you are leading the patient to say no. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we should avoid leading questions. There are many more examples in this video. We cannot keep talking about leading questions, but we should avoid leading questions. Okay. We should mm -hmm. keep the questions open that the patient can respond. We should not lead them. Mm -hmm. And clarify any vague or need amplification. If there is any statement that patient is telling or you are telling that is not clear or there is something that need explanation, you should explain it, okay? Because this term, this statement needs, you know, explanation. That is summarizing information to correct, uh, to encourage correction, invite further information. This is, you know, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful criteria you know most of students when they do first role play with me they after they finish their role play they start like this okay mr smith do you have any other concern no doctor okay mr smith let me summarize what we have discussed so far so first of all your father is suffering from sleep apnea. And in this condition, over uh, respiration stops uh, temporarily. And this condition can be due to obesity and there are many factors. And you know, to treat this condition, we have positive uh, pressure therapy and your father should avoid junk food and your father should decrease weight and all of these things here is brochure you can read this information okay mr smith is it good to summarize like this no generally is, does this criteria mean we should summarize at the end of role play for the patient no no there is one trick one trick to use this summarizing information at the end. We, I cannot share all of these tricks in, you know, social medias because I need to keep some tricks with me also to get some money also. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is, you know, quite we artificial. We have to pay for your tricks. <laughs> <laughs> So we should not summarize each and every role play that is not necessary. Okay, there are some points, some, some special timing when we need to use this. 
and in between even in between overall play when we are doing one first bullet point second bullet point we can summarize a little bit so mr smith you have told me that you have a headache and vomiting yes doctor am i right yes doctor okay this is summarizing like this also it does not mean that at the end you start summarizing all bullet points okay so take care sorry so here so summarizing now the last point is giving information giving information if i if i ask all of you that we have discussed you know uh one four five, five criteria in clinical communication criteria and four here nine criteria in linguistic criteria nine criteria nine nine criteria of oit speaking if i ask you one question out of these nine what is the most important criteria and which in which student make mistakes okay what is the most important criteria which is in which mostly student make mistake you should answer information giving mm -hmm. information giving let us let us read how it what does it miss kate will uh, who is uh, the new participant let us not take the name because some people don't want to take their names just new i will say new participant new participant can you read this line please new one newcomer please can you please read this line okay maybe he or she does not know how to unmute miss kate please continue okay establishing initially what the patient already knows mm -hmm. if patient is having a diagnosis of transit ischemic attack try mm. dia so okay mr smith based on what you have told me it seems to me that you have transit ischemic attack okay in this condition blood flow to the brain and stops and you don't have oxygen to the blood to the brain and then you black out and then this happens and this happens is it good no let us imagine if your patient is then you need to explain him if your patient is a retired a retired neurologist do you need mm -hmm. to explain what is tia no i think no because he is a neurologist so uh, maybe patient is having tia for the last 3 or 4 months and multiple times the patient already knows even he is not a neurologist he knows what is this tia this don't come to you talk you bug no maybe yes no it, hey, this patient will come to me uh huh this will pay for trick no 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 this patient because you know some neurologists are also taking oit they may come to me <laughs> okay uh huh and they will take <laughs> You know how they will explain TIA? Mm. This is this is a neurological condition in which there is there is ischemic stroke in our brain and our, our there is a you know uh, villus yeah. you, the our carotid veins carotid artery become you know uh, what do we say 
restricted and narrowed and we our blood supply to the uh, medulla oblongata and uh, you know midbrain and this is interrupted so if you use your neurologist and you explain the patient like this patient will you know black out <laughs> we need to use simple terms okay we should ask okay mr smith based on what you have told me it seems to me that you have transit ischemic attack have you heard about that or what you already know about that something like that a patient is having you know sleep apnea like us like this but you know you know this is another joke once i tell you in first role play when my student do first role play with me i ask them to ask the patient what he already knows about this okay okay mm -hmm. in the next role play in the next in the second role play what they start is okay mr sumit okay mr sumit they ask about diagnosis then they are talking about treatment and you know indications investigation mr sumit do you know what is ecg they start right they keep you know they start asking questions like this do you know what is ecg do you know what is ct scan do you know what is this no this is only for main diagnosis ecg in developed countries people know what is ecg people know what is ct scan people know what is you know mri you don't need to ask do you know what is M ecg you should not overuse these thing uh, what you already know what do you know about that okay like this this is common mistake next part miss tatiana will read it Posing periodically when giving information, um, using the response to guide next step. Periodically pausing when giving information, using the response to guide next step. Response of what response? Whose response? Patient. Patient response. If patient says, I don't understand what you are telling, you don't need to get, tell the next step or explain the first step, first step again. Mm -hmm. So you need to pause. Patient will say yes, then move forward. Patient will say, okay, doctor, I don't understand, then explain it again. So you need to pause, periodically give information in chunks, in pieces. What I usually say to my students, Okay, so Mr. Diana, if you have ordered a pizza of, you know, family size pizza of, you know, two pounds, one pound, you know. I'm alone, I, Doc. Sure, <laughs> I don't know. The pizza are not for pounds. <laughs> Cakes are by pounds, okay. You ordered a pizza and mm -hmm. you have pizza in front of you and yeah. there are three people to eat one pizza. Miss Tatiana, Miss Kate, and Dr. Che. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Miss Kate needs A grade. So she will just, you know, eat one piece of burger, one piece of pizza. Dr. Che mm -hmm. needs C plus and B. He will also eat one piece of pizza. And Miss Tatiana needs A or A plus. 500 out of 500 out of 500 so what you will do is you will pick this pizza in your hand a complete pizza and you will push in your mouth complete pizza <laughs> so you will get five or 500 out of 500 yes. this is the same yes. thing this is the same thing you have a lot a long list of you know a long list of instructions okay mm -hmm. as you are a doctor or nurse you, in during your uh, student life 
when you are in the medical college, medical school, you have memorized all of these things. If patient has a MI, we need to tell them exercise, we stop smoking, do this, do this, do this. And if patient having a stroke, we need to tell them that do this, 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 and this. So these things are normal for you. And for patient, if you tell all of these things in one go, in one go, in one chunk, in one chunk. This is just like uh, putting a complete pizza in the mouth of your patient or in the, you know, just giving a lot of information. So what I want to teach is we need to eat pizza bite by bite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not complete. We should not push all pizza in the patient's mouth in one go. If we tell a lot of things in one go, patient will not understand. Patient cannot retain information. We need to give information in pieces, in chunks. So okay. encourage the patient. If patient has, is there any something bad news, any you know, you know, not good news, uh, we need to encourage the patient for <clears throat> reactions, for feelings. If there is something good, you should encourage the patient that for good that thing we should you know acknowledge their good things. If there is some bad thing. We should show sympathy, empathy. So all of these things. Checking whether patient is understanding or not. If you keep talking and talking and talking, at the end you ask, do you understand Mr. Smith? If, if the Mr. Smith is someone like Dr. Che, he will say, no doctor, I don't understand what you are telling. Then you need to start again. Okay, Mr. Smith, let us start from the one, from zero. So you need to inf give information in chunks in peace and keep, keep understanding. Patient is understanding or not. Keep asking or just by patient response. He is saying, yes, okay, okay, yes. And mm. discover further information that patient needs. So just leave it, okay. So if you get two out of three in each clinical communication criteria and five out of six, in each linguistic criteria, then you should be happy because you will get B grade. A. Yes, A is by eating complete <laughs> pizza in one go, then you will get A grade. <laughs> okay, at the end, what we need to tell our uh, uh, viewers that you should subscribe to Dr. Chase. Dr. Channel, Dr. YouTube channel. channel, okay. Subscribe. Mm -hmm. If you subscribe to my channel, when I will upload my new video, you will get a notification and you can watch them, okay. This is the benefit. Okay. And I will okay. be also happy. I have 1,000 subscribers, 2,000 subscribers. You know, oh, it, will, okay. it will encourage me to make more videos. Also like, comment, and so share videos with other people okay with other students okay and the mm -hmm. one last thing my whatsapp number is is in the comments below in the comments and link to my facebook group is given below because it is mm -hmm. easy to get updates on facebook groups and if you want to talk with me for any service you know mm -hmm. okay. if you need any feedback for speaking writing or any other module you can contact me okay thank you dr tatiana and dr kate for your time thank you to the doctors thank as you. well thank you. <clears throat>